Hey everybody, welcome back to RPG Elite. Today we're going to be doing part two of our quality number five of the RPG Elite philosophy. So let's get started. Welcome one and all to RPG Elite. This is the place where we put the RP back into RPG. And we do this by talking about things like we do in the day with our RPG Elite philosophy or I might give you a tutorial, I might give you a tip, or I might expose you to a new tool in the tabletop RPG space. And all of this, of course, is so that you, dear viewer, whether you are a returnee, whether you are one of my leets, what's up, or whether you're a greenie, brand new to the channel, it's for you to have a more immersive and enjoyable experience. So as I said, this is part two of quality number five in the RPG Elite philosophy. RPG Elites don't play with any and everybody. And in our first video, which will be in the link in the description below, in a link in the description below, I should say, because you need to go and watch that first. In that first video, we covered six types of players that RPG Elites will not play with, but I was wrong. Yes, it happens. I know once every, I don't know, five, six years, I'm wrong. And I was wrong because it's not just six types of players. It's seven types of players. In that last video, I said that the activist was the most annoying player type to me. And I was wrong. Okay, I'm going to count that wrong right there as being wrong overall, like one big shot, okay? wasn't that type of player that annoys me the most. The one that annoys me the most is the one that I'm going to begin today's video today. So this is how we'll do it. We'll go ahead and I'll give you that last type of player. And then we're gonna go into seven reasons why RPG elites won't play with those player types. But before we get started, Let's go over to the community tab. Of course, I got a new poll over there. I'm asking you guys about how we can break up this gameplay session that everybody's been asking me about, or not everybody, but a lot of people have been asking me about, are you gonna have gameplay sessions? And we are, we're again, trying to work out the logistics and everything of it. I want you to be a part of that because there's a couple different ways that we can do this in terms of how we'll break up the actual gameplay video. So you can go over to the community tab. And again, link is in the description below. Go to the community tab, click on that link, vote in the poll. I'd like to hear what you guys think about how the different ways that I'm thinking about breaking up these live gameplay sessions or not, well, maybe, I don't know. I don't know, the live probably not, <laughs> probably not. Uh, pre-recorded, it'll probably be pre-recorded instead of live. Okay, so today, here we go. We're gonna actually end the last video in the first part of this video and talk about that seventh player type that RPG elites will not play with. And this is my most annoying player type. That is the whiner. The whiner. You know, you might have played with one of these before. They seem to complain about everything. They could be talking about something that's not even game related. And then somehow it leads to complaining about something in the game. These guys do this throughout a session. So they'll find anything to nitpick at. The favorite target is the GM how they adjudicate things. Or it may be the mechanics that they are complaining about. Or it may be complaining to the other players about the plan that's going on. And it's not a suggestion, it's a complaint. And these are things that happen on a consistent basis. We're not talking about things that happen after the game and you know we get around and we talk about things. That's not what we're talking about. This goes on before, <laughs> during and after. 
there's just this long line, this litany of complaining. And that to me is the most annoying. When dudes do this, it's even more annoying. It's, it's very, very annoying to me. So that's the seventh player type RPG elites won't play with. But you might be wondering, why won't they play with these seven player types? I think some of these are self-explanatory, but we're gonna do some details here right now as I get into the reasons why RPG elites will not play with these seven player types. The first one is the uninterested. And the reason, well, they demoralize our tabletop RPG experience. You know, what we try to do as GMs, as we facilitate these things, we wanna keep the morale up. We wanna make sure everybody's having a good time and everybody contributes to everyone else having a good time. But when you're looking at the player over there on their phone and they're pretty apathetic and just kind of going, you know what I'm talking about or they're over in their own world, and you could tell they're not really into what's going on. Well, that for the rest of the players, that pretty much brings the morale down of the whole session. That person is disinterested, that apathy is infectious. So we don't wanna feel like that, RPG elites. And so we'll just avoid that by avoiding those types of players. The uninvested are the ones who devalue our time. They do not think of time as being a precious commodity. They want you to value their time in whatever they want to do, but they don't value your time. You're spending all this time either, number one, calling them to see where they're at, to see if they're coming because they're going to be late or they haven't called and we don't know and they're not there. So now they're wasting everyone's time as you, probably the GM, are calling them, trying to find out where they are, are they coming? Many times it's a no call, no show. And I'm gonna say this many, many times through many, many videos on this channel, you got one time to live, one. And there is no manual that says that you have to put up with that. I mean, if they're going to devalue your time and not think of your time as being precious, uh, let me give you an example. And it's a small example, but this stuff adds up. Maybe you as a GM have put together a little something for their character. And you know that, you know, it'll probably be at the beginning part of the session, but they don't show up or they're late. And now it's past that part because you guys have decided to start without them. The character that they said that they were gonna be there to play, they weren't there to play. Now we're not talking about something that is every once in a while. We're talking about something obviously that's chronic. And so because of that, RPG elites will not play with someone who's uninvested because we look at our time as being valuable. And we're not just gonna let somebody else devalue our time. Next is the ROLL player. Now, out of all of these player types, you will notice that six of them are individuals who have character issues, but not this one. This one is different because this one is just purely stylistic but it's two different styles clashing in one session and that's not good see the role player the r-o-l-l player and i've talked about this before in the other quality video that i did number four where rpg elites role play we believe it's required i talk about the different levels of role playing the high and the low level and ROLL players like to stay in the low level, structured role playing, just rolling some dice, not in the high level creative, immersive role playing, the imaginative role playing. So you have an RPG elite and you have a role player and there's always 
tension because they suppress our experience, right? The RPG elite, they're trying to go this way. The role player is cementing themselves down here. And so now you got this tension all of the time. Tension, tension. I wanna go this way. No, I wanna go this way. I wanna go this way. No, I wanna go this way. And so you have this going on in the session or an RPG elite has to limit their freedom because even when they try to play with a role player, just to kind of lightly encourage them to get into some role play, they might laugh it off a little bit, but there's nothing going on here. Crickets. They don't go in that direction at all. They have cemented themselves down into the low level structured RP and they budging. We don't want to limit ourselves when we're coming into an RPG session. RPG elites want to be free to express themselves and do all the rest of that stuff and to be able to play off of that because that just heightens the experience for everyone in the session. Unless, of course, you're a role player. If you're a role player, it doesn't. It just suppresses our experience and we would just rather not go through that. Next is the soloist. Now the soloist is unappreciative or ignores our contribution. The soloist wants to be there, but they want to be there for one reason and one reason only, to be the center of attention. This is classic narcissism, by the way. And even when the team wants to go in another direction, they will, by default, go in the opposite direction because they want to be the center of attention. I don't mind as a GM sometimes splitting players up. That There's nothing wrong with that. It's not that they should be together all of the time. Does it take a little bit more work? Yeah, it takes a little bit more work, but there's nothing wrong with that. If, it, if this is going along with the story, nothing wrong with that. But the soloist, this is chronic again. These, these are behaviors that are incessant. Every session, they're going off over here or they're going off over there or they're doing something else. And you're trying to, at one point, just kind of keep everybody together so that the campaign and session can just flow and move a little bit faster. But the soloist is all by themselves doing their thing. Now, one way that they try to excuse this behavior is they say, oh, well, that's what my character would do. Now, if they were actually a team player, they would have mentioned that, hey, my character does this, my character does that. Is that going to be OK with the group? See, because they don't want to take away from that experience. They, won't, they don't want to do that. So they just kind of ahead of time say, hey, my character, they do this, they do that. I just wanted to let you guys know that. Is that gonna be okay? Will that disrupt things? I can, you know, change things up a little bit. That's a team player because they really want the whole session and everybody to have fun in this. But the soloist, they'll just say that off the cuff. All of a sudden, oh, well, uh, that's how my player is. That's, that's how they are. No, it's not, it's how you are. <laughs> that's how you are. And now you're just trying to play it off and, you know, it's like, I always like to say, stop lying. Stop lying. It's you. And I just ain't gonna play with you, bro. Now we come to the activist. And this is so important to kind of lay out. That I'm just gonna read it straight from my notes here because I think that is very important, all right? So the activist rejects our purpose. An RPG elite's purpose in playing tabletop RPGs is to have fun and increase our enjoyment level of collaborative storytelling experience through active high level role playing. That is what an RPG elite's purpose is when they come to the table of a tabletop RPG. Let me keep reading. The activist doesn't approach the game with that purpose in mind, but uses the game as a means to press forth a personal, political, religious, or whatever agenda. And they play that out through the game. And you know the, who they are, right? Some of you guys call them SJWs, social justice warriors. 
And they like to use the game as their platform to do that. Now I'm gonna make a separate video that addresses this specifically, but uh, GMs need to not have that in their campaigns because this is again, one of those things that it's not just this character, but it's the character after and it's the character after that and it's the character after that. All right. Well, I mean, if you allow that stuff in your campaign, that's you. I ain't gonna allow that. I ain't gonna be a part of that. I came here for a high level collaborative storytelling RP experience. So RPG elites, we will pass on that all day, every day. The monster. Okay, well, I think that's self-explanatory because they just destroy everything. And I don't think anybody, I don't think this one right here is an RPG elite thing. I think this one right here is just like anybody. Nobody likes to play with a monster. But some people will tolerate them. Now listen, some people will tolerate them and they'll use this as an excuse. Well, they're my friend. All right, well, you need to get new friends because what's playing out with the monster right there is a huge character flaw. And if that's your friend, okay, then we, we need to talk to you about the, you know, the company you keep and you bring in that down on other people. RPG elites won't even have it. We will see that and hit the door. I'm not sitting there and watch these cats do some crazy stuff and kill my experience for the next three hours. Nah, that's all right. I won't do that. Y'all do your thing, but I'm not a part of that. And any RPG elite will take that and be like, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Now, the last one, of course, is the whiner. And the whiner is just ungrateful for the RP to tabletop RPG session. Their complaining is actually complaining of the ungratefulness of the camaraderie, of getting together in a social context, of even being allowed to be a part of that group. They're ungrateful. They think somehow they're privileged and should be there so they can complain about everything and listen. Nobody has to have you in their group. This is the wonderful thing about everybody who's coming to the ta tabletop RPGs. But if all you're gonna do is whine and complain and be ungrateful, uh, you can leave. I'm sure it's water off of a duck's back for all of those who are involved. Now, of course, you got some of the people who'll be like, oh man, they left, oh, whatever. Yeah, they left. Start looking at your time as being valuable and your experience as being precious instead of trying to please everybody and get a whole bunch of people just to come to the table. Sometimes less is more. Now that's another video that I'm gonna make. It's not sometimes less is more, many times less is more, and that is especially true for tabletop RPG sessions. So there it is, folks. Seven reasons why RPG elites will not play with these seven player types. I want to know what you think by putting your comments down below. And if you like this video, then you could crush that like button. And if you really like the content on this channel, then why don't you go ahead, consider subscribing right now to the hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, hit the notification bell as well. I come out every Tuesday and Friday with videos. That's gonna do it for me, Servant of Shiloh in the hizzy, or getting ready to get out of the hizzy so I can get busy. And until next time, if you've got some games going on this week, then happy gaming, and I'll catch you on the flip. Peace.